You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. For the community, by the community. For the community, by the community. Most of us have already gone green in some way or another, but there's always more we can do. In this episode of Life and Style with Sarah, we're going to learn how to live greener by getting a lesson in composting, reusing common household items instead of throwing them away, and learning how to be responsible recyclers by visiting our resident green monster. I'm Sarah Connor. Stay tuned for Life and Style with Sarah, Living Greener. <laughs> Composting is an easy way to reduce and reuse. You reduce the amount of garbage that you send to the landfill, and the end result is a fantastic fertilizer you can use in your garden. I've asked my friend Suzanne Sayers, an experienced composter and a master gardener, to give us a lesson on composting. Let's see what she has to say. Hey Suzanne, thanks so much for having me. Great to see you. Thank you. Your gardens are gorgeous. Thank you. It's a beautiful day. The rain stopped. Gorgeous. So what is composting for people who don't know? Well, the technical term of composting is the control breakdown of organic material into humus. But what that really means is that we just collect our waste, it breaks down, and it turns into this beautiful black soil so that we can grow great vegetables, um, plants, perennials, shrubs, and trees. So some of the things that I compost, which most people have in their homes every day, are eggshells, banana peels, coffee grounds, tea bags, um, any vegetable that I'm peeling, whether it's a cucumber or an apple, apple cores. Uh, I compost any dead plant material that I'm deadheading. I compost um, grass clippings and leaves. And all of that will break down, and I will be happy to show you what it ends up looking like. So that sounds simple enough. Mm -hmm. It is. Can you show us? Yeah, absolutely. Why don't we go into my kitchen and I can show you how it all starts. Okay, that sounds great. Let's okay. go. The first thing really you need to have is a bin. And I have a compost bin in the backyard, which I will show you afterwards. And then the second thing you really need are some scraps to put in the bin. So what I have here are some uh, fruits and vegetables that I'm going to be using for a salad. So for example, with a strawberry, obviously I'm going to cut off the top. And slice my strawberry. I keep my compost bin handy in the kitchen. Now, this is not the prettiest thing in the world, but it really serves the purpose and it holds a lot of waste. So I've been letting this material decompose probably for close to a week. And if you can see, I have eggshells in here. I have lemon after I cut the lemon and juiced it. I have a rotten lemon that's in here. I have coffee grounds, and you can see that the juices are really kind of starting to work in the bottom. Now, it's not the prettiest thing, and if people were over, if I had company, obviously I would move this somewhere else in the mudroom, but because it has a lid on it, it doesn't smell, there's no bugs at all. So if this isn't really pretty enough for you, there's always a much lovelier version of a compost bin for your kitchen. So this is specifically made for the kitchen and it has this lid here where it has a filter so none of the smell will get released, um, no bugs will get in, but there's still air circulation. And it's just made out of ceramic, smaller than what I have and this would probably hold about two or three days worth of waste. So with the cucumber, I mean it's pretty obvious, so you just cut off the ends. I just Boom, toss them here. If you have it next to you, it's much easier to remember to compost. If you don't have something on the counter, you know, I think that naturally you would just go to the garbage and throw it away. But if it's in front of you or easily accessible, which I find to be the most important thing, then it's a no-brainer. And it's certainly no more difficult to throw it into your compost bin here than it would be the garbage. And again, if you, you know, if you start to let it decompose here, you're not adding extra waste to our landfills. So I feel like that's something, you know, that's really important to keep in mind. So my scraps again, just 
just go in here. This morning we brewed coffee, so I would just take the grounds out, filter and all, and just add this right in. If I had tea that morning, I would have tea bags, and I would just add the tea bag in, keeping the paper on if you have you know, a tea bag that you're dunking. Um, something else that I'm going to add today to my composter are some flowers that, as you can see, are past their prime. So I'm not going to add it to my bucket because my bucket is pretty full right now, but I, what I will do is I'll actually just take the vase, walk outside in the back of my yard, and just dump the flowers, water and all, into the composter. So now we've talked about what to compost from inside your house, but why don't I show you what I have in the garden, and I can uh, take you out there and show you what I'm going to put in the composter. Okay, great, let's go. So you showed me lots of great gooey stuff in the kitchen that you can compost. So what, what do we do, what do we add out here? I'm about to deadhead. I have some iris here that are past their bloom. So this is part of the green material that needs to go in. We have green versus brown. And you pretty much need an even amount of both in order for the composter to really work and to okay. really cook. So this is considered green. Um, so I just basically cut off my stems. And I'm going to chop them up a bit so that I can put them right into my spackle bucket here. OK, so we have a, we have a, we have a spackle collecting bucket. bucket. Right, so anytime I deadhead or prune, I pretty much just okay. walk around the garden with my spackle bucket. I mean, obviously, you can use whatever you like. So these are greens. So what do you mean by brown? Well, browns are things like leaves, pine needles, peat moss, shredded paper. Um, those are high in carbon. And the okay. greens are high in nitrogen. And you need both of those in order for the, de um, the decomposition to really happen into the compost. OK, so you collect. So the stuff from the kitchen is green? The stuff from the kitchen is green, exactly. Okay. And then like garden waste is green except for leaves? Except for leaves and any dead plant material would also be considered brown. Okay. So I do have um, a plant, a grass that never survived from last year, which I can show you, and that would okay. be in the brown category. Okay, so if it was green but it's dead brown now, like then leaves, that, that's right. That's considered brown. Right, so as okay. far as getting a good balance of both, starting in the summer, composting may not be your best option. Springtime, when you're getting all of those leaves back out of the garden, raking them out, or in the okay. fall, when you have access to lots of those leaves, right. as well as the green material, would be a really good time to start your composting process. OK, OK. Great. So um, can you show me where you put all this Absolutely. stuff? Absolutely. Let's walk over to my compost bin. OK, sounds great. So here we are at my compost bin. And as you can see, I use a black plastic one with a lid on it. And it has a trap door. So the comp once it decomposes, it's very accessible. And I can just uh, scoop out the compost. Now, there's other options as well. If you have more space in your yard, maybe you want an open bin where you can add lots of leaves and grass clippings and lots of yard waste. I mean, this really has a limited capacity, so we mostly use it with our vegetable and our fruit scraps, which I already showed you from our kitchen, and anything that I prune and I deadhead. That pretty much is what can fit in this type of compost bin. My composter has a lid. Now, some people think that if they compost, it's going to attract rodents, uh, mice, rats, raccoons, all sorts of things. That is absolutely not the case. If you add only the material that you're supposed to add, then you're not going to have that problem. Um, so I'm going to start to add my kitchen waste. Now, I have a combination here of browns. And there is some um, dead plant material, which has turned brown. There's some roots from some dead grasses that are brown. So this is the greens. I talked about that earlier. It's important to layer. If you think of like a lasagna, where you layer the noodles, the cheese, the sauce, it's pretty similar with composting, but it's simple. You don't have to get so much into measurements. It's really simple. And I just make sure, OK, do I have, you know, a somewhat equal amount. So that was the green. So this is a brown. This was a grass that didn't make it. So this is going to be my brown component, just going to get tossed in there. And this is the iris that I was deadheading earlier. And then after the compost, now it's really getting pretty close to the top here. 
although it, within a week it's going to reduce significantly because it's going to get very hot once I put the lid back on and because now it's June. Um, but we do have a pitchfork. And you really want to aerate this as well, which is why a tumbler is nice because you can just crank it. But I happen to like this because of the trap door. And I know that my waste is going down, 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 and I can access my compost at any time. But you do need to aerate it. So we do use a pitchfork for that reason. And we toss it around. We go down to about maybe halfway down and just kind of turn the material every few days. If it seems very, very dry, you want to add some water. I don't usually add water except for when I bring out some dead flowers that are still in the vase and I just add the water to that as well. Once you kind of see what you have, you can kind of tell. Now my coffee grounds were very wet. The material in this container, this is already really, really wet, so I really don't need to add any extra water. If I was adding a lot of brown material, then you would need water, but as long as you're really balancing out with the browns and the greens, you shouldn't have to add any additional moisture. This is what it looks like from when it goes to my kitchen scraps, the garden waste. Eventually, this is what it turns into. It's brown, it's crumbly humus, it's considered gardener's gold. And I'll show you how I get it out. You just lift up the trap door, and I basically just start to pull it out. Now, if I see that there's, say, a lemon in there, or I can really see what the material looks like, any apples. Now, twigs are okay. I just toss those aside. But if you can identify some of the foods, it's not decomposed enough. But if it's gotten down this far, then it almost certainly will be ready. So here we are at my raised beds where I have my vegetables. And I have my compost buckets with me. So what I'm going to do, this is a new bed that we have, and you can see that I have tomato plants here. So I am going to be amending the soil with the compost from my composter, as well as the leaf compost. Now what the leaf compost is, that's from the town. When the town collects our leaves, uh, they make a big pile of it, it decomposes, and it's usually about four years later that it turns into some really beautiful, rich, black compost. So we use that in addition, primarily because we just can't generate enough compost in our bin for all of the garden beds that we have, but I really save the compost from our bin for the vegetables because I think that's where it can benefit the most. Now over here I have our raised bed, which we put in the vegetables probably about a month ago, and you can see the lettuce and the Swiss chard and all the kales and the broccoli. They're doing really well. We've already harvested a lot of the lettuce. And this soil has absolutely been amended with a lot of compost, completely organic material. And as a mulch, I've used, it, I've used the leaf compost on top of that. Because we use compost and we amend the soil, the soil is extremely healthy. So we're, we really don't get any diseased plants. Any bugs that we get, I can control them naturally with an insecticide. But I really believe that the plants are so healthy due to the soil structure. And that's really a, di a direct result of the compost having been, and the soil having been amended with the compost. But you know, I have one other tip, and I'd like you to follow me back over into my garden. So what I wanted to show you are some containers that I have. I know lots of people love to do containers on their patios and their decks. Mm -hmm. And because containers really require so much fertilization, because every mm -hmm. time you water, all that water leaches out of the bottom, right. and it pulls a lot of nutrients out as well. So what I do is I, I use potting soil, um, but I also add compost as well. Mostly I add it as a mulch on top. Okay, so you but mulch I, with your compost. I do, right. and I also mix it into the garden soil that I purchase you know, okay. from the garden center, because that helps to give extra nutrients. And throughout the season, sometimes I make a compost tea, so I'll just take my compost, add some water in it, so when I'm watering, I'm also watering some more compost in as well to give it that extra fertilization. So even if you're not a huge perennial bed, you don't have lots of garden beds, if right. you're just a container gardener, you have great uses for it. Absolutely. And it's really simple. Super simple. simple. I think people get intimidated, but it's really right. not that hard.
hard. It's not hard at all. I mean, if you can carry your garbage out to the garbage can, then you can carry your compost out to the compost bin. It's as simple as that. Thank you so much for showing me all this wonderful stuff, showing our viewers. You gave us such a great composting 101 lesson. You're welcome. Thanks for coming. Suzanne showed us how to reduce our impact on the landfill by composting. Now I'm going to share some of my tips on how to reuse household containers and packaging instead of throwing them away or buying new ones. So my first tip is with the glass jars that food come in. They're perfect size for storing things and some of them are really attractive. If you take a look at this one, this is a um, glass jar from Stonewall Kitchen and this has paper clips in it. So and it's cute, it has a little green lid, just took the label off and I was good to go. Newman's own pasta jar, or uh, excuse me, it was a salsa jar container. Perfect for storing sequins. Lots of crafting items can be stored in these things and it's pretty because you can see the craft item through the jar. So this is a pasta jar with um, some pom-poms in it. And here's another attractive jelly jar that I'm using as a pencil cup. And look at how great the lid looks. Really cute little gingham red lid. And finally, my daughter took a jelly jar and she just glued a ribbon and a pretty button on it. And it's a great gift. So not only are they useful, but you can give them, have your kids do some crafting ideas and give them as gifts. My second tip is with packaging. If you buy bedding, sheets, quilts, um, blankets, they usually come in these little plastic bags that have a zipper. So you can see here I got some pillowcases. Take out the pillowcase and the uh, paper packaging and you have this great zipper container that you can do so many things with. So for example, here I have crayons, so a great container for kids' crafts. Um, I have si crafting scissors. I have a big bag here that sheets came in with a knitting project in it. They even come in huge sizes. A quilt came in this one, and I have all sorts of my um, recycled ribbons in here, and guess how I have them separated? In small plastic containers. So next time you buy bedding or anything that comes in a great zipper container, make sure you save it and reuse it instead of buying some other um, plastic bin or container. It'll save you some money. My final tip is with bin storage. So here is a plastic bin that you can buy, of course, easily, and here's some more ribbon being stored in here. But everyone collects shoe boxes. I know I do. And if you have kids with growing feet, you have lots of them in the house. And even some stationary boxes. And the station, this is a stationary box, and it's actually pretty attractive. So you can reuse this, but the only downside is it's not clear. So you don't necessarily know what's inside the container. So the answer to that problem is you can label it, put a label on it. Or for kids who can't read, you can put a picture on it so they would know that inside this container is crayons. You could even go so far as to put pretty attractive paper on the outside, but I didn't think that was really necessary. If it's being stored in the closet, it'll just look like this and you'll be able to see what's, what's in it. So instead of going out and spending lots of money on plastic containers, reuse boxes that you already have. That's another great tip for living greener. Some packaging just can't be reused, but don't throw it away recycle it. According to Doug Gabriel in Public Works, West Hartford residents have been doing a great job taking advantage of its new single stream recycling program. A recycling volume is expected to be up more than a thousand tons this past year. But there are still some items we are forgetting. Empty aerosol cans, laundry bottles and jugs, shampoo bottles and liquid soap containers, and in the kitchen those wax coated beverage containers that hold milk and juice as well as clean used tin foil, and don't forget, worn out Tupperware containers can all be recycled. Just remember, with plastics, if it has a little triangular recycle symbol on the bottom with a number one through seven on it, it's recyclable. With West Hartford's single stream recycling program, it's amazing how much can be kept out of the landfill. So what about items that aren't recyclable in the big blue bin? Take electronics, for example. Did you know that it's illegal to throw electronics away in your garbage can? 
And if you ever try to dispose of them on those two or three days a year where they have free electronics recycling, and then you completely forgot or you were out of town, well, the green monster in town has the solution for you. And we modeled this company after the state laws are in effect now for covered CEDs. So that's your televisions, your CRTs, your printers, and your computers. And the manufacturers cover the cost of uh, recycling the products. We don't throw anything into a landfill. Nothing gets disposed of in a landfill. It's all handled correctly. It's all processed, broken down. You can bring electronics to cover CEDs, which are the televisions, CRTs, printers, computers, laptops, any kind of electronic devices we accept, cords, cables, uh, plastics, metals, old phones, house phones, uh, irons we'll take, we'll take uh, dehumidifiers, microwaves, air conditioners, old lawn mowers, any kind of plastics we can accept and that's all free. Only thing we're not accepting now is uh, light bulbs. We're the largest electronics processing facility in Connecticut right here in West Hartford, our hometown. So it comes in from each town, it's weighed, it goes into the trailers, and then it goes to r and our downstream partners, and they handle the glass and all the covered CEDs. Everything else we take in, we process and move along the way. That's our bailing machine. We bail all the plastic in there that we produce, and then it gets sent to a, a plastic recycling facility, and they make new stuff out of it, a new life. It's part of recycling. We store up wire, we get a lot of it as a byproduct of recycling. So all this right here, this is the products, I mean, we, we take apart the computers, people process it. Usually we have different boxes of fans, some hard drives, there's a power boards. Those are called power supplies, those come out of the computers. These are circuit boards, we take these apart, and this is the stuff that was in the landfills. You know, if these, you know, it gets in the computers, they break open, there's, you know, hazardous chemicals in here and stuff. Uh, there's like PCPs, mercury, that would, you know, leach into the soil and create problems. This is a hard drive. What we do is we take them out of the computers. We see what they are, if they pass inspection, if they're just going to be scrapped immediately or if they're going to be reused. If they're reused, we do a DOD wipe on them because that just wipes out everything, puts X's and O's on it. But for these, anything under 40 gigs, we just put a hole in it, and that destroys the data on it. So you know your data, and that's included with the free service. Oh, here comes the monster, Sarah. How are we doing today? Did, eating a lot of CPUs or what? You can have the green monster come to your school and uh, talk to you guys about recycling. We'll go out, talk to the kids about you know recycling, what we do, how we do it. Uh, another thing we do for the, uh, the schools is we'll do fundraising events for schools where people can come, drop off their electronics, there's suggested donation fees that all goes back to the schools, and people drop off, they, you know, five to seven dollars, whatever it is, and they can support their school and their cause. And anybody who wants to use the facility can come use it. That's the best part about it. If anybody wants to be green and not to pay for it and know that the stuff's getting handled correctly in an environmentally friendly way, we're the place to bring it. We're open Monday through Friday from 7 to 3.30 and Saturdays from 8 to 12. Very soon, the town of West Hartford is expecting to announce that the Green Monster is going to be the town's designated free electronics recycling center for all of its residents. And they're open six days a week. Living greener can be done with very little effort. You can have a positive impact on the environment and you could even save yourself some money. I'm Sarah Connor and you've been watching Life and Style with Sarah. For more information about West Hartford's many recycling and waste disposal programs, go to www.westhartford.org and search under Public Works. For a link to Suzanne's composting tips and other show topics, go to my website, www.sarahconnor.net.